After playing a little musical cars, we got the fastback in the garage now. Went for a very successful test ride in the thing. Running, driving, stopping. That's awesome. Now the fastback, um, today I think we're gonna do a couple things more assess what we really need to do. So I had ordered, um, I actually ordered rebuild kits for the carburetors. If you see this one, we have the choke has come apart. So I'm gonna pull one of the screws out of this one maybe and see if we can match them up with some screws we have here at the house. Um, some of the wiring is a bit crispy and needs to be taken care of. Um, these spark plug wires are ones that I just had extra lying around and they are not correct. And the car actually isn't running really that well. And I think there could be a couple different factors. Um, the Right now, uh, when I tried to move and adjust the distributor, it was locked, locked in. So that could be a, an interesting problem we come up against because I wanted to replace the condenser and the points cap rotor the whole bit I've got like I said I've got new wires I've got new plugs I've got everything to do the tune-up that the car really needs but it's looking like we might run into some issues along the way um, I did actually get another coil um, because this is a six volt car it's our my our only six volt car so I wanted to have a spare coil we'll end up swapping that out too but like, like I said some of the wiring is crispy and there are just some some interesting things that I think are causing an issue. Now, if you look here, the condenser wire has been extended, which could be part of our problems. I mean, there's just a lot of little things that are probably adding up to this car not running correctly. Now, because this car was an air conditioning car, you needed, uh, it, it moved some stuff around. Like this vent hose actually normally would have gone here the the base of the air cleaner has been the air horns been cut off and turned to the back so now we have some weird routing mess there that i kind of want to see if we can change um and i think the coil on the type 3 normally would have sat in a different spot as well i could be wrong there but i know when i was looking at condensers there was some with different length wires and i think that's what needed to happen here instead somebody just used one possibly from a bug and extended the wire which could be causing a problem i had to use the old coil wire still and that's a little sketchy like i said it just needs a good going over tune up and clean up So with a lot of uh, shenanigans, trying to get these plugs out of this Type 3 engine with that AC compressor here, with dual carbs, without a whole bunch of room to get in there, was definitely a pain in the butt. Now, something that kind of threw me off was as I was pulling the plugs, looking at the spark plug wire layout on the distributor, I'm so used to type one motors and the layout that they're set up at, but I'm guessing because this is a vacuum advanced distributor, not enough room. The distributor on the type three is set up pretty much 180 out from what you're used to. Cause we have, you know, one, four, three, two. And I'm actually used to one being 
in this position here. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And now I took all spark plugs out at the same time. And honestly, let me grab them real quick. One's still in there. Now the GoPro might not be the best to show, but realistically the plugs don't look that bad. A couple of them smelt a little like fuel, but overall I've se definitely seen worse. I mean in a car that I know the plugs hadn't been changed in since 90 something, they don't look bad. Reason why I did all four at once is I actually want to do a compression test on this car. A compression test can give you kind of a, a snapshot of the health of the engine. Now, one thing that's super cool is I have stickers. This one you can't read anymore and it looks like it had a few more that had pulled off at some point. But these were from Morganson Motors. You see that one's 1129.67. All cylinders had a 120 pounds of compression on them, which is kind of cool. So we're gonna do a compression test on this, see where our cylinders are now. I mean, at least it'll give us a snapshot of the health of the engine itself. So we've got the compression tester hooked up on cylinder one. Trav's gonna crank it over and I'll tell him when to stop. We'll see how, uh, what kind of compression we have on cylinder one. All right, uh, looks like it got just, just over 90. Not the best, but we'll move on to the next cylinder and see what we've got in number two. All right, got the compression tester set up again on cylinder number two. Not gonna lie, kind of hard to get the right angle of the dangle to get this thing in there. We're gonna have Trav crank it over again. And we'll see what kind of compression number two's got. All right. Whew. It looks like just shy of 120, so about 118 or so. All right, let's see what we've got for the other two. So we've got the compression tester in cylinder number three. Trav's going to crank it over and see what kind of compression number three's got. All right, so that one looks about like number two was, kind of 115, 118-ish. Check number four. I almost kind of want to recheck number one, wondering if I uh, didn't have the compression tester set all the way, but let's take a look. So we've got number four hooked up. Trav's gonna crank it. We'll see what we've got on number four. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, looks like kind of the same, same range as two and three, you know, the 115 to 118-ish. So, you know, as of right now, we got three cylinders that are pretty solid and one, eh, not so good. I, honestly, on Volkswagens, anything below 100 is, is kind of tired now um, it could be it could be a, a, a valve adjustment itself but we're gonna I want to rehook the compression tester up to one again and and give it one more go and see what happens all right so we had three cylinders with compression around 115 118 and one cylinder with the compression at about 90 90 is not the end of the world end of the world but really on these air-cooled volkswagens it seems like you want to see at least 100 and above anything below 100 can be a it, it's it's lower than it should be um now it might be as simple as a valve adjustment which this car is going to get it not today though i don't think what we're going to do right now is get the plugs back in probably through throw the new wires on that i have but first I think we're gonna see if we can get the distributor to move and out because I would like to replace the points condenser cap rotor 
the whole shebang on that while we're here, while we have everything pulled, pulled apart. So if I can get the distributor out, I'll show you um, how to adjust the points and, and what the condenser and everything looks like. And we'll go from there. Oh man. So feeling a bit defeated. This has been one of those days. This distributor is not budging. I mean, we've got everything off and out and pried open and whatever, and it's not moving right now. So um, I noticed the points are a little bit, need a little bit more gap on them. So I'm gonna adjust the points here. I'm gonna throw the new cap and rotor, new plugs, new wires in and uh, call it good for right now. I think, I think uh, later on I'm gonna do a valve adjustment the carbs will get pulled possibly at some point and rebuilt or I don't know we might drop the motor out of this thing and clean it up and just try and go through everything and really really get it to where I want it to be so I guess you'll have to have to stay tuned for that future episode of mileage unknown when we find out what I actually did but for right now I'm going to uh kind of throw this back together a little bit just so it runs and drives again and move on to the next thing yeah that's the problem the car actually needs, the, that's what needs to be done is all the oil leaks on this thing so there's the there's the problem i don't know uh i don't know it's one of those things because once if we pull the motor out to fix oil leaks then we're doing lots. Because it's not gonna stop. It's gonna be one of those, you fix one thing, and then you end up fixing a lot of things. Right. Actually, we'll go, we'll go your same route. Yeah, see my, my pedal still has sponge. The end. That's... 
that's to the floor. Okay. I, I do though, I think now, now after driving dad's car, my car, I think it gives you a sense of, you know, that's what I, I mean, you know, that's what I said about the thing. The thing would be perfect if it had my 55 motor in it. Yeah. Because you get used to it. You get used to just going when you want to go and friggin', you know, passing people on the freeway. If you want to pass, yeah. Time. Yeah, so that's the, that's the debate we're having. I can't really tell if the fastback is not running quite the way it should, which there probably is a little bit of that. Or if we're just used to driving the bigger motor cars around and these just feel super slow to us. I mean, this one to me does feel like it doesn't quite rev like it should. And I know it's not gonna be a race car super fast, but it just feels like it's missing a little something something. But, I don't know. Like Trap said, we're too used to driving the big motor cars and these just don't feel like that. Gotta learn to cruise. Yeah. Although this would be fun with a decent sized engine in it. The problem that I have is, Trav's bug isn't quite the same, but Hobbs 56 feels like it's either on or it's off. And you're either full throttle or not. I mean, it doesn't feel like it wants to cruise. Whereas this, I mean, this has to be the quietest Volkswagen any of us have ever owned. I mean, this right. thing is perfectly quiet. So, do you give up a nice cruise in perfect quiet for a big motor? I don't know. What's the compromise? <laughs> you trade it for one of those. What? That's still. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. Oh. That kind of car is what totaled my, my GLI. Oh. That's the kid was driving that hit me in the Jetta. Oh. 